Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I'm Hashim Ali Khan. Now this is the last video on theory of cash flow statement analysis. Last two videos I have explained you about the meaning of the term cash flow statement. What is the need, importance, advantages and limitations. Apart from that, what are the differences between funds flow statement and cash flow statement and preparation of cash flow statement according to AS3. That means all the activities are divided into three categories, operating activity, investing activity and financing activity. All these things I have already explained in the last two videos. In this video, I'm, explain, I'm going to explain you about the format of making the cash flow statement. After this, in the next video, we'll start the problems. So remember, the problems are based on the theory. So until and unless you are clear about the concept which are used in cash flow statement, you cannot be able to solve the problem. So that's why these theory videos are very, very important. You should not skip in between and don't leave the video in between. Don't join in between. Watch the video till the end. If you have not watched the earlier videos, go to the playlist of my channel. Select the subject accounting for management. Select the videos of cash flow statement analysis. Watch the earlier videos, be clear regarding the concept, then only go to the problems. So before starting the explanation of this format of cash flow statement, take the screenshot of the points which I have written on the board. So format of cash flow statement. Actually, there is no prescribed format given by AS3, Accounting Standard 3 issued by Institute of Chartered Accountants of India. So no specific format is given, but the only thing given in the Accounting Standard is every cash flow statement should clearly specify the cash inflows and cash outflows from operating activity, investing activity and financing activity from these three activity what are the cash inflows and what are the cash outflows specifically should be disclosed now there is no specific format prescribed however the expectation is that cash from operating activity investing activity and financing activity are separately stated and the net increase or decrease is arrived at so in every activity how much is the inflow and how much is the outflow separately we have to show it and net amount that means if the inflow is 2 lakh and the outflow is 1 lakh 50,000. So from 2 lakh deduct 1 lakh 50,000, 50,000 is the net amount. So net cash flow should be shown. And adding to this net figure to opening balance of cash and cash equivalent. That means whatever net balance you get after setting off the inflow and outflow in all the three activities. This uh, net cash flow should be added to the opening balance of cash and cash equivalent then we will get the closing balance of cash and cash equivalent the following format can be used as a performer for preparing cash flow statement so the format of cash flow statement is like this the so cash flow statement for the year ended now two columns one inner column one outer column so first of all we will take cash flow from operating activities the first activity operating activity so net profit before tax and extraordinary items so first of all you need to take the profit as per profit and loss statement or income statement take the profit before tax and before any extraordinary item that you take it in the inner column to this you adjust adjust means some items to be added some items to be deducted so adjustment for non-cash and non-operating items that means those items which are taken in income statement but which does not involve any cash those are called non-cash items best example of non-cash item is depreciation depreciation is only a book entry it does not involve any cash but depreciation already taken in profit and loss statement. So this depreciation is called non-cash item. It will be added back. Similarly, goodwill written off or any other intangible asset written off, provision made for irrecoverable debts or bad debts or provision for taxation, proposed dividend, 
these are the items which are called non cash item already adjusted in income statement that will be taken here similarly non operating incomes so here i have given non cash expenses should be added example depreciation non cash incomes non cash incomes like discount received that will be deducted and the non operating expenses like dividend paid that is a non operating expense that will be added back non operating expenses should be deducted so after adjusting all these non cash non operating items we'll get operating profit before working capital changes you know working capital means current assets minus current liability now individually we compare what is the current asset last year what is the current asset current current year example inventory last year stock 1 lakh current year stock 1 lakh 50 thousand so we are having two balance sheets last year balance sheet current year balance sheet so we are comparing the stock we are comparing the debtors we are comparing uh, the bills receivable similarly creditors bills payable all these current assets and current liability we compare so what we find some current assets are increasing some current assets are decreasing some current liability is increasing some current liability is decreasing so whatever increase and decrease is there that increase or decrease will be adjusted here will be adjusted here what is the rule of uh, adjustment here i have shown adjustment for working capital changes increase in current liability or decrease in current asset should be added this point you have to remember if the current liability increased during the current year add up if the current assets decreased during the current year add up the opposite will be deducted what is the opposite decrease in current liability or increase in current asset should be deducted so this rule you remember for working capital changes so correspondingly we add some items we deduct some items we will get cash generated from operation before tax we got cash operating profit before tax now we pay the tax tax paid now finally whatever amount you get that amount you take it in the outer column second column this is called cash generated from operating activities if you get positive write down cash generated if you are getting negative here minus figure cash lost in operating activity or cash used in operating act so if positive cash generated if negative cash used in operating activity right the one activity we have completed operating activity the second activity is investing activity investing activities are those activity which are concerned with acquisition and disposal of non current assets fixed assets or long term investments so long term investments or fixed asset if it is purchased or sold that amount will be taken under investing activity so first sale of fixed asset sale of fixed asset means cash inflow cash inflow when you sell the fixed asset we are getting the cash similarly sale of non current investments some long term investments are there sold away again we get the cash inflow purchase of fixed asset there is a cash outflow money is going out when there is cash outflow put the amount in bracket bracket denotes outflow negative purchase of non current investment again there is cash outflow then interest or dividend received on investment similarly interest paid on interest or dividend on investment so if you add up all these the final figure may be positive or negative if it is positive cash generated from investing activity if it is negative cash used in investing activity so that we have taken in the outer column so two amounts we got in the outer column first amount is cash generated from operating activities second cash generated from investing activity now the third and last one is cash flow from financing activity the financing activity is concerned with procurement of funds by issue of shares or debentures or bonds similarly redemption redemption of debentures or repayment of loan so finance raised either from the owners or from outsiders 
that will come under financing activity so what are the item that will come under financing activity issue of share capital including premium when the company issues shares including premium that will be taken as a source there is cash inflow the company is issuing the shares and receiving the cash similarly issue of debentures bonds or any other long term debt instruments the company will issue debentures to the public or bonds or any other such instruments long term debt that means issuing the long term debt instruments that is also a financing activity cash inflow then the repayment of long term debt the company has taken a long term loan from bank and during the current year loan repaid similarly redemption of debentures redemption of preference shares dividend paid so these are the items which comes under financing activity the only thing you have to see is whether there is inflow of cash or outflow of cash regarding redemption or repayment there is cash outflow when the company issues the shares issue the debentures take a bank loan it's a inflow so inflow means without bracket outflow means in bracket you should take bracket denotes minus so after setting of all inflows and outflows finally you will get the amount that amount you take it in the outer column if it is positive cash generated from financing activity if it is negative cash used in financing activity that's it so three items we have taken in the outer column first item cash generated from operating activity second item cash generated from investing activity and the third one cash generated from financing activity now these three items may all be positive may all be negative or some positive and some negative you set off all the items finally you will get net increase or decrease in cash and cash equivalent so finally you will get increase or decrease if it is positive increase if it is negative decrease then add opening balance of cash and cash equal at the beginning of the year will get cash and cash equivalent at the end of the year that's all this is the format of cash flow statement ha huh. so after setting of the three items we may get increase or decrease in the cash and cash equivalent if you get positive value net increase in cash and cash equivalent if you get a negative value net decrease in the cash and cash equivalent to this you add opening balance of cash and cash equivalent beginning of the year if you add up you must get the cash and cash equivalent at the end of the year now this final total you can compare it with the balance sheet cash and cash equivalent if both are same that means you have correctly made the cash flow statement that's it now cash flow from operating activity in making this cash flow statement the only difficulty a student will find is in calculating cash flow operating activity there are two methods suggested by as3 for calculating cash flow from operating activity one is direct method one indirect method in direct method we simply take the gross cash receipts and cash payments in operating activity operating act activity is the principal revenue generating activity so in that principal revenue generating activity what are the gross receipts of cash and what are the gross payments of cash take all the receipts of cash minus all payments of cash will get the cash flow from operating activity so it appears very easy but while calculating it is a time consuming tedious i mean uh, matter in order to calculate cash flow from operating activity by direct method because again we have to go back to the accounts take all the gross receipts excluding all outstanding any amount accrued or outstanding should not be considered whatever cash is received whatever cash is paid that you will be taken into account so it will be time consuming so normally we will not apply this direct method the second method is indirect method in indirect method already we have prepared the profit and loss statement in profit and loss statement we already got the net profit earned during the year now we start we take the net profit as per profit and loss account to this we adjust all non cash non operating items if we adjust all non cash non operating items to net profit 
will get cash flow from operating activity. That is called indirect method. And in the coming problems, all problems, we apply this indirect method only for calculating cash flow from operating activity. Here in the format also, I have shown the indirect method. We have taken the net profit to net profit. We adjust all non-cash, non-operating items. We'll get cash from operating activity. That's all. So last one, adjustment for working capital changes. While calculating this cash flow from operating activity, we will adjust the working capital. Working capital consists of current assets and current liability. So we compare the current assets and current liability of last year with the current year. So some current assets may increase, some current assets may decrease. Some current liability may increase, some current liability may decrease. We find out which item is increasing, which item is decreasing. Now we apply this rule. If there is increase in current liability or decrease in current asset, that should be added. That should be added here. Similarly, if there is decrease in current liability and increase in current asset, that should be deducted. That should be deducted. So this rule you have to remember for adjusting the working capital. That's it. So in this video, I have explained you the format of making the cash flow statement. Now you are in a position to solve the problems on cash flow statement. So inshallah, in the next video, I'm going to start the problems on cash flow statement. So if you are satisfied with my lecture, give a like to the video, share my channel in your group, in your friend circle so that more students can watch the video and enhance the knowledge. Subscribe if you have not yet subscribed. Apart from this, many other videos I've already uploaded and by the super thanks below, the, below my video.